Hey YouTube, this is Trent again. We're gonna make a quick video about Mopar's electronic ignition. So there's a lot of videos out there that are um, that like essentially say you have to go with Chevy uh, HEI for the little piece that you can buy out of their distributor to get rid of the ballast resistors. And that is not the case. Um, I did a lot of research on this, watched a lot of other people's YouTube videos to figure it out. And what I saw on YouTube wasn't necessarily correct. And what I is what I ended up doing in one of the best resources was Hot Rod Magazine. They do an article on it. This is nothing new. I'm not going to probably give you any new information, but I haven't seen anybody cover the um, electronic ignition yet. Which how I'm going to, which is what I needed when I fix it. So part of the reason on my Dart, my '67 Dart, I couldn't get it to run. It stopped running which was electrical issue and I wasn't getting spark and I, I didn't really understand the system. Um, and man, the car sat for a long time. And then now when I was getting it ready to drive, I needed to figure out the electronics system. So I'm going to go through that real quick with you, um, and show you what I did. And then also share the information with kind of how I got there. So these are the wiring diagrams for Mopar electronic ignition you can find on the internet. There's two different ones. Um, there's a five pin and then there's a four pin. You can use either one. The four pin would have been off of an earlier uh, electronic ignition car. Five pin would off have been later um, with emissions and stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones of these you can find online as a PDF on a Google search uh, or if you go to any Mopar forum. This is how I, you know, worked out how to wire my, my dart. What was in my car is the five pin because the, the original ignition, um, electronic ignition system that was in my car was out of that seventies Fury and it had the five pin. Uh, what is in there now is also a five pin. It's out of a 78 Dodge Monaco. When I started having electrical issues with my car, some of the wires started shorting out and like this is the power wire it got burnt a few others got burnt in there that i had to go through and pull out and completely replace and it also kind of fried the system going to the the ignition control module and when i had that system in here i didn't understand about the ballast resistors or whatnot so it had both ballast resistors hooked up which probably didn't help things but that wasn't what was causing the issue it was bare wires up in the bulkhead causing issues. Um, so I'm going to go through how I wired this. And again, I got information from Hot Rod Magazine and the Mopar forums. Uh, I looked at this and the ignition control box that I have is a four pin. The wiring that I have is a five pin. And if you look, the only difference is number three and it goes to the dual ballast resistor. And that is this guy right here. This one has just a single, which is what my car actually has in it for points right there. And I'm going to back up real quick. I think I explained this, but maybe I didn't. You don't need a ballast resistor if you have an electronic ignition. You need a coil that is internally resisted and then um, electronic ignition. The only reason you need the ballast resistors for Mopars is if it is points and the reason being is it saves the you'll burn up the coil and also you'll burn up the points mopars that came out with electronic ignition they the coils were not internally resisted so you do need it for that coil but if you replace that coil you don't no longer need these and it's just kind of nice because it's another one less thing to figure out what's what's wrong and why it's not working back to the wiring diagram so if you look the only difference is so this one's got pin three, this one doesn't. Pin three goes up to the double ballast resistor. Um, otherwise, everything else is pretty explanatory, or not explanatory, but it's, it's kind of easy to follow along. You know, you got two, goes to negative, then you got positive coil to the ballast resistor, it's the same, you know, negative, positive, and then that goes to your ignition. And then your number one on both, goes over to ignition and so it's ignition one and two um then four and five go to your distributor and that is it so your ignition one and two that is for when you're cranking the car over when you're cranking it over it gives the full 12 volts to the coil to be able to start the car up and then when it's just running the ballast resistor resists it and it doesn't get the full 12 volt power 
it doesn't hurt it's actually better for it to have that while it's running you're gonna get a little bit better performance out of it so how i wired mine up and i'm gonna try and show this um i've got a four pin ignition control module in here and i've got a five pin harness so Number one we need, and that needs to go to the ignition. This one should have went to the coil, or not the coil, but this should have went to the double ballast resistor. And we don't have that. It can come right here. And in fact, that's not doing anything because this is a four pin. So there's nothing actually for that pin to match. This one here, which would be number two, this goes to my negative coil, my orange and gray this is what goes to the distributor and i'll try and show that see it clips right in there to the distributor and i'll trace over and i'll show you over on the coil how everything is but we're going to start here at the ignition control module um so i showed you where one and three goes showed you where two it goes to the negative one and three are together negative distributor so that is my five wires you know here's two pins, three, four, five. This is all power and it goes to the ignition. So on the ignition one and two, I have those hooked together because there doesn't need to be one and two. That is part is how it would go into the ballast resistor so it doesn't get the full power. This looks a bit like a, this looks like a mess and it is a mess because the wiring harness is a mess. It needs to be replaced. So this is just piece together to be able to get it in and out of the garage and work on it and drive it until I get a wiring harness to put it all together, then this will be done a lot nicer. But in this big bunch here, we have ignition one and two from inside the car, from the ignition switch, go to here. We have it hooked into our voltage regulator. And then this also goes over to the positive of the back on the alternator. And it also goes to the positive of our coil. So that's that big rat's nest right there. And over here, I'll show you. So here is the back of the alternator. Here is my, and this is a newer alternator. This is not one from the, you know, it's not a 67 um, Dodge Dart alternator. It's a newer one. I think is actually off of that 70s Fury. But here's the power and it goes across, matches up with all those wires. So here's my coil. You can use the Petronics one or you can use the Excel um, to get rid of the ballast resistors. I've got the Excel one. I think it works good. You know, I've recently put it on. Here's the positive to the coil. And then the black with the yellow tracer is my negative. And that's it. That is how it's wired up. Um, it works works fine and there is no ballast resistor so that that is all gone and there are no chevy parts on here either i didn't need to go get the hei little piece to stick on the distributor you don't need that that does nothing different than this right here so if you wanted to get rid of this box you sure could and have it on your distributor um i like this kind of looking like a mopar with dodge parts on it Maybe it doesn't make sense, but I think it looks cool to be able to have, you know, the ignition control module on there. It works the same. So I'm going to try and keep this car Dodge parts. So from here, we will pour some gas in the carburetor and we'll start it up. Okay, so we're going to start it up. So I have my executive producer right here. She's going to get our, our key right there and crank it over. Um, this carburetor needs rebuilt, but I'm putting a four barrel on, so I don't want to really put anything into this one. Uh, so I have to give it a little bit of juice in the carburetor to get it going. Go ahead, crank it. So that is my video for the uh, ballast resistor and um, electronic ignition and Mopars. You don't need the ballast resistor if you have an electronic ignition and you change out the coil where it's uh, internally resisted. If you use a stock Mopar one out of the 70s, a coil, they say right on there needs ballast resistor. 
um, you'll burn those up. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> and so that's how I learned that on that, that it burns those up. But as far as, you know, if you get an Excel coil or a Petronics one, you don't need the ballast resistor for your, your electronic ignition system. If it's a, um, point system you do need them you do need them other you do need a ballast resistor otherwise it will burn up your points um i hope that you got something out of this uh my executive producer over here that is giggling and dancing thought i'd show you that uh the car is no longer in the garage right now um you know i just wanted to show you it starting up we pulled it out because we're going to work on that thing for a little bit today thanks for watching